Lord. Faith is leaning on somebody else instead of yourself. Isn't it? And faith is not something you do. It's something God has to write in your heart because faith was imputed to Abraham. Impute, logizomai, means to assign. Faith is assigned to every one of the elect believers. And if it's not assigned to you, and faith is death to self, faith is not wishing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, hypostasis. Understanding. Hupo means under a hypodermic, hypo dermis, under the dermis, under the skin. Hypostasis means understand. Stasis means to stand. And there's none that understandeth. Well, if faith is understanding, God has to put it there. Well, if you understand, you're a learner. Aren't you? If you understand, you learn. And a learner, that's the word disciple. Mathetes, it's our word mathematics, mathetes. Mathetes. And the Bible says you can't be my disciple without a daily cross. If you don't bear your cross and follow me, you can't be my disciple. So it takes a cross to learn. It takes a cross to understand. But you won't take your cross. You have to be condemned to a cross for telling the truth. Do you hear this anywhere? I don't hear it. I don't hear anybody talking about it. God's doing it all. He's doing everything in his people. He birthed us and he insists that we behave ourselves. This is a family thing. God has picked us before the world began. He chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Why would God pick one and not another? According to the good pleasure of his will. He wants to. And whatever he wants to do, he does. That's why the Bible says, for whom he did for no. Well, I didn't finish this. God so loved the world, God gave his commandments to the orderly arrangement of mankind in a certain fashion. And it doesn't say that whosoever believes in him, it does not say that. It says that the believing all shall have everlasting life. There's no conditions on the statement. The is an adjective. Believing is a participle. It's a verbal adjective. And all is the noun it modifies. That the believing all. All is singular. There's one singular all. It is the flock. It's the church. It's the sheep. It's every one of God's elect that he knew before the world began. That's what predestination is about. There's a certain number in the flock and they're all going to come. Jesus said in John 6.37, All that the Father giveth me. The same word he uses in John 3.16, That the believing all. Pas is the word, P-A-S. And Jesus said in John 6, 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Every, everybody wasn't given to Jesus. Jesus said it there in John 17, I pray not for the world. I pray for those whom thou hast given me. They are thine, thine are mine. They were always yours, Father. Every lost sheep will come into the fold. Goats will never come, and goats have never been sheep. Every lost sheep will come. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. When he's come into the world, they're no longer lost. He'll chase down every one of them, and the wolf won't get one. This is the truth. It's hard for the world, and it's hard on you because he's predestined us to something. He's predestined us to conform. Whom he did foreknow, Romans 8 and 29. The people God foreknew, prognosco. Know intimately beforehand. Gnosko means to have a relationship with. God before, pro means before, he had an intimate relationship with a whom, with a whom, whom he did foreknow. And these are the people that he has predestined. Prohorizo is the word predestinate. That's the word. I had a guy tell me one day down at Sam's, well, I don't believe in predestination. He called himself a Baptist. I said, you have to believe in predestination. It's in the Bible. And he went, he didn't, he didn't even know it was in the Bible and that it had a definition. You have to believe it, don't you? Yes. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son 
Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Called, predestinated, called, justified, and glorified are what's called aorist indicative verb, A-O-R-I-S-T, indicative. That sounds difficult, but it just means past tense. Everyone that was predestined has already been preordained before the world began for the light. Predestinate, pro, horizo, it comes from pro, and horizo means to bound, and that is our word horizon. Horizon, it means to predetermine for the light. That's what it means. And light is always truth, and that's something you have to do, isn't it? John 3, 21. He that doeth the truth cometh to the light. If you're not doing truth, you have never come to the light. This is not something you have to try to do. It's something God's going to put into the hearts of all of his elect. It's going to wake them up to the truth and say, I must do this. And if you say, well, that's just so much hogwash, then you need to leave and go on to hell. I wouldn't put up with this kind of message if I didn't believe this. I'd get up and pff, I ain't hearing that. Would you? You're going to hell if you don't walk in the light or walk in truth. You say, but how do you do that? It's something you have to do and you have to be willing to bring your body into subjection. Do the gogeo. A G O G E O. What do you mean? Do la A G O G E O. This is a construction of the word do loss. D O U L L S. And ago. Look here in 1 Corinthians. Look at this. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. <clears throat> if we don't enslave ourselves to God. This word doulos means to, in, this is the word slave. Slave. Ago means to lead. We have to become enslaved to Christ. If we don't become enslaved to his will and to his work, and it's something that he gives us. Boy, this is a really a hard thing to get a hold of. God preordains it in us, but he has to put us through so much fire, we get so fed up and so tired of ourselves that he has to cause us to be willing to say, I've tried everything. I give up, Lord. Well, he's brought me there. Put me on my deathbed here in Hendersonville Hospital at about 44 years old. I'd been years in the music business. I'd been years in real estate, trying to be somebody, trying to get rich, trying to be, get a lot of applause, trying to be seen. And I was laying there with IVs in my arms, saying, and it was like the end of the road for me. I thought I was going to die. I told told one of the nurses, I I'm going to die. She said, oh, I said, I really want to. She said, oh, but you don't mean that. I said, oh, ma'am, I really do. I, I'm so tired. And I sat up on the side of the bed. I said, Lord, boy, I didn't behave myself. I lived for me. And the first time I ever said these words, I'd blame real estate promoters. I'd blame real estate moguls and real estate uh, brokers and salespeople, and I'd blame music promoters, and I'd blame famous singers that had gotten in my way. And I woke up and I said, Lord, I, I'm tired. I give up. And I'd been a believer all my life since I was a kid. 
Have you ever just left God and taken off out there in the world and tried to do what you want to do? And God just keeps hitting you in the head with a hammer.